Hey, I'm Cece Summers. Welcome to Sucker for Love, Date to Die For. I'm so fucking excited. I'm so excited. Let's do this. Yes! <laughs> Survive, survive chapter one to unlock. Okay. Easy. The thousand versus the one. Eldritch gods, cosmic horrors, things beyond our understanding. To merely gaze upon their form is to abandon all hope. They are sequestered to the stars, appearing only through challenging, failure-prone rituals and unutterable incantations. Their twisted, fanatical followers require no such invitation to commit horrors beyond belief in their stead. It is then when the boogeyman lurking in the shadows is in an obscure, imperceptible shade, but a tangible madman that the vague prognostications of the stars become empty threats before the undeniably material. The simple hatchet in their hands. Did something scary happen? No, it's fine. Huh? Oh, we're adorable. <laughs> in the book you're reading, did something scary happen? You're as pale as a sheet. Oh, just a strange dream is all. I'm all right. Oh. Sorry, this might sound strange, but can you tell me where I am? You're in my bookstore in Sacramento. Are you locked? Sacramento. Oh, no, I think I know where I am now. Thanks. I've been having odd dreams lately, waking in strange places with no memory of how I got there. Started walking around the same time folks began vanishing from my hometown, Sacramento. Despite the small size of this backwater town, dozens have gone missing this past year. So many that the trains won't even stop here now. Worried locals say they've spotted angry spirits prowling the woods. Animals with too many features watching. Outsiders can't shake the feeling of being watched by the town folks' unblinking purple eyes. The Sacramento Stare, they call it. Oh, gosh, I'm sorry. Didn't mean to keep you here late on my account. No, no, it's fine. I'm glad that you enjoyed reading my book. But it's starting to get dark outside. With all the disappearances lately, you better hurry home. Home. My family fled this place long ago when the disappearances started. But a letter imploring me to come visit appeared in my apartment earlier this week. Hey, Stardust. Mom's still pretty shaken up about everything, so I'm taking care of her at Graham's place. If you came by for a visit, I know it would cheer her right up and then help her feel better. We miss you like crazy. What do you mean it just appeared in your apartment? Like, not in your mailbox? Not at your house? Like, in your apartment? This is definitely my father's handwriting, and only my parents call me Stardust. Impossible. Mom, Dad, I know you're not really waiting for me. You've been gone for over a year, but whoever sent this note obviously wants me to come poking around, and I aim to find out why, and then get kidnapped. Hmm, there's been a huge amount of disappearances in my town, and now a strange note wants me to go to another location. A note from people that I know could not have sent it. Sounds like a great idea to just fucking go. <laughs> There's something strange in Sacramento. The dreams, the stare, the spirits. It's all connected, I'm sure of it. Whatever darkness has settled in our neck of the woods, I'm putting a stop to it. Mom, Dad, I love you both so much. I'll get to the bottom of this. Thanks for letting me doze off. I promise I'll come back real soon. Thank you for stopping in. Take care. The warm glow of the bookstore fades behind me as I step out into the dusk. Sacramento. This should be my hometown, but it's become unrecognizable. The streets are overrun with dense foliage and the missing person posters that litter every surface. They call this Missing Person Lane now. Desperate searchers put up posters here before vanishing themselves. It's the only path left and leads straight to my Graham's house. But something feels off. 
The familiar landmarks of my childhood are nowhere to be found. So go during the daytime, maybe? Or just a crazy little thought. Have I gotten turned around? No, I've walked in a straight line. Yet nothing looks right. Stay calm. I pick a direction and jog, searching for anything familiar. Nothing changes. I double back, check walls and addresses. Still lost. Maybe if I check the note from my parents for the address. A grocery receipt? Impossible. I just had their letter. I even kept my pockets empty so I wouldn't lose it. Wait. This receipt has the exact dimensions and folds as the letter. Could I have imagined the whole letter? No. Impossible. I check the back and then double check the front. But the receipt remains just that. Something is very wrong. I have to get out, have to run, have to- Hey, ow! Are you like blind or something? Watch where you're going, Klotorama! I slammed it right into somebody coming from the other way. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you all right? I should have been more careful. Whoa, she's really pretty. But what on earth is this girl doing wandering around Sacramento at night? Probably fucking kidnapping people. Don't touch me. Sorry, I didn't mean to smack into you like that. I know it's not an excuse, but I was just in a rush. Oh yeah, I know. You gotta go run off and steal my boyfriend, right? Yeah, it's whatever. Totally cool. Save your breath. I already know how this goes. Trust me, and I mean this with all sincerity, I want nothing to do with your boyfriend. Like, maybe, hear me out, maybe I was just rushing home because of the, you know, horrific amount of disappearances that have happened in the city recently. Wait, huh? What? Your boyfriend? You heard me. My boyfriend. Buck is mine. Buck is most definitely yours. Do not worry about it. <laughs> Who the heck is Buck? Where are all these accusations coming from? I don't know anyone named Buck. Huh? <laughs> really? You don't know who Buck is? On second thought, yes, I totally know who Buck is. Yep, me and Buck, we go way back. We go way back. Like, oh, you you meant like Buck. I, I heard something different. I heard Buck. I know Buck. The stare. It's real. I turn my head down and briskly walk past her. She starts walking alongside me. Hey, look at me. I can't let her see my eyes no matter what. She'll notice I don't have the Sacramento stare. You can tell me. <laughs> Are you from here or what? I live here. Oh yeah? Look at me really quick. No. This is bad. Even if I make it home, she'll know where I live. What do I do? Look at me. That was rude. That was so rude. Trendy girl. You know what's trendy? Having manners. I freeze. Before I know it, I'm already staring straight at her. <laughs> Bucky, hi. Got another one for you at Missing Person Lane. I break into a mad dash, running my hardest. Everything is a blur. My heart pounding in my ears can't dull out the sounds of whistles, shouts, and unidentifiable commotion coming from all sides. Panting and dizzy, I feel my body slowing down, but the image of my face on the next missing persons posters kick my legs into action once more. There, a clearing up ahead. If I can break their line of sight, I might find a chance to hide. As I near the turn off, my exhaustion makes itself known. If this is a dead end, or it's too dark to find my way, I won't have the energy to turn around and start running again. Rounding the corner, I gasp. It's Grandma's house! Thank goodness! I dash up the path and burst through the door. 
right into the arms of my best friend, Buck. I hold the door shut for what feels like forever as my pulse slows. The pounding footsteps pass by outside. I'm safe, for now. Girl, look at how many fucking shoes are on in the entryway here. Look at look at all those shoes. There are so many people here right now. And that someone got fucking body slammed into the wall here. Hey, what's I may just be standing at the entrance, but I can already tell something feels off about my home. Like the warm, familiar place I grew up in is long gone. I can't put my finger on it, but this dread. Why do I feel like I need to sneak around my own home? Is someone here? Hello? No response. So this is just our normal entryway? This is just what the entrance of our house looks like? The fuck happened here? Why are we spinning? Why are we spinning? Oh no. Find your upstairs bedroom. Okay. Well, um, I like the hearts. Can I, do I, I just click on the next area or what do I do? Oh, I bet I was D. I don't, I don't was D. How do I get around? Oh, I guess I was just accidentally trying to leave. <laughs> Dumbass. Oh, I don't like that mechanic. I don't like that mechanic at all. Why the fuck is our house like this? What is this? What is this? Oh, I can look at stuff. Our family photos look off. None of them have me in it. And my siblings, their faces seem unfamiliar. What are those weird symbols doing there? Why is one of these rooms just a question mark? Oh, that's the entryway. I'm lost already. <laughs> Let's go where the horrible blood stains are. Okay. The bird cage where my gram gram kept her finches. It's been destroyed from the inside. The fuck happened to our house? What? Oh, no commentary on these? No commentary here? Everything's normal? Fresh, dripping meat. I should avoid counting the number of legs. The blood in the bowl is an odd color. I'm a bit relieved it's probably not human blood. But then what's in all these bags? Why is the meat green? I really don't like that mechanic. I don't like it. Unusually pungent spices. Pepper, nutmeg, ginger, and cinnamon to name a couple, I see. The air is almost suffocatingly thick with their scent. It looks like cooking oil, except it's in a gallon container, and it smells like burnt hair and sulfur. The color is black as soot, too. What's that terrible smell coming from the fridge? I can't bear to open it. All 
All right, let's go back in here, I guess. There's a room this way. A garbage room. Nothing interesting in here. Okay. Damn, that's a lot of beds in there. A lot of beds? That's odd. I could have sworn we only had the one futon downstairs. Where did all these extra beds come from? And why are they all laid out like this? Cripes, what a mess. The place has been turned upside down, but nothing is missing. Weird. If anything, they just came and added more shit to the house. Don't like that there's children's stuff. Looks like the triplet's toys have been mostly untouched ever since we left in a hurry. So why am I back? All right. Oh. Oh. Well, we're not going to go down there. That's for sure. Okay, almost there. Let's check out the bathroom. Various beauty products left on the counter. None of these are mine. A strange, slowly writhing plant. I feel sick from the smell. It is a very mild reaction for a gigantic fucking beanstalk growing out of your bathtub. Any cultists out here? Oh, that is cool. Okay. It's blocked from the other side by something purple. I can't see clearly through the keyhole either. like my posters. Some creep plastered my little brother's room with smutty posters. Whoever did this is getting a fist in their face. A pale flower. It is beautiful beyond belief. All right. Guess we'll go to our room now. What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? What on earth happened here? This occult nonsense. Has someone been living in my house? 
The candles are still lit. Whoever's responsible was just here. But who? Why? Where have I been living? This book isn't mine either. No title, no author, and it reeks of death and decay. With trembling fingers, I opened it to a random page. Sure. Seed the Black Woods. Instructions on how to corrupt the soil of a forest by using remains of a goat and the beating heart of a human. The beating what? I read and reread the passage, but it's plain as black and white. The beating heart of a human. I reread it again and again, my disbelief washing away more and more each time. This isn't a joke. First, the stare that only the locals have. Then, the disappearances. Then, the supernaturally overgrown woods. And now this? The truth dawns on me. Sacramento has been overrun by cultists. All those missing people, my parents, they haven't been spirited away by angry forest spirits. They've been abducted. And I'm next. There must be a way to stop this. I flip desperately through the book's pulsating pages, searching for anything that might help. Summon the All-Mother, a ritual to force the dark deity behind this madness to physically manifest before me, binding her in a form that can't directly harm me. This is it. My chance to end this nightmare once and for all, to face the sinister goddess behind Sacramento's madness and put a stop to her evil, whatever the cost. For the sake of everyone who suffered and died, I have to try. I'll bind this all-mother to a physical form and destroy her. Looks like I already have everything I need to try. Mm. I'm so good at these summoning rituals. This is gonna be fine. <laughs> it looks like an idol of a goat. Only it has too many legs and too many eyes. It weighs a ton, too. How'd this get up the stairs? Uh. Mm -hmm. My bass guitar? It looks like they've mostly left it alone. Plant mister! At certain times in conversation, this icon will appear and you can spray the speaker with water by right-clicking. This will interrupt whatever they're doing or saying. I love it, like a cat! This feature was primarily included in consideration of players who dislike being hit on by older women slash eldritch abominations, but it has other uses, too. Who doesn't like being hit on by older women slash eldritch beings, though? These herbs are enormous, at least ten times larger than normal. How the heck did they get this big? Okay, let's not redraw anything until... Okay. This ritual will bind the black goat to a physical form that can't harm you. However, no contact with eldritch gods is completely safe. To summon her, do the following. Douse any lit candles. Get out of there. Ensure there is an idol of the black goat present somewhere in the room. Check. Have a plant mister with you. Check. While facing a tree of the Black Woods, chant her name. Rokzan Selva Oscura. Rokzan Selva Oscura. Mortal, you dare summon me again? Have your pathetic lives not been expended long enough by my gift? Have your lusts not been sated? Must you continue to torment your goddess so? I, I didn't do it. <laughs> my heart pounds as an immense towering figure materializes before me. My head is splitting open. I can't think, can barely breathe with this weight crushing down on me. Do you have any idea who I am? I'm Roxanne, the black goat of the woods. And you will rue this day. I'm sorry, Roxanne. <laughs> Madness given form, shredding my sanity with each second that passes. It's evil, ancient, and endless, peering into the deepest parts of me that were never meant to be seen. You tread on dangerous ground, little lamb. Know that each time you summon me, my wrath grows. I will make you rue 
each second of agony you have inflicted. Now, choose your next words carefully. What more could you possibly want of me? Speak! I have to banish her. To send her back before there's nothing left of me. But the words I need won't come. Did I really think I could face a power like this? Stupid, stupid girl. With the last shreds of my will, I cling to the thought of why I came, why I dared this folly. I swallow bile and terror, straighten my spine, grab a candle from the floor, and speak shakily. I'm here to stop you from hurting another soul. I'm sending you back to the darkness you crawled out of, one way or another. Really? Um, yeah. Oh, thank goodness. I thought this nightmare would never end. Um, aren't you supposed to be, like, trying to stop me or something? No, I'm into this. Get me out of here. Okay. <laughs> My brow furrows as I stare at her, wordlessly. Isn't she supposed to want to, you know, spread madness and whatnot? You're confused. Well, yeah. You want to be exercised? Vanished. <sighs> yes. I'm rooted to your planet and cannot be removed without a human's aid. I don't understand. You have so many followers. Followers that just tried to kill me, I might add. Can't they free you instead? Things have gotten messy with my cultists. Messy in a bad way, I mean. My followers have turned against me and are abusing me and my woods' power to kill outsiders indiscriminately. Have pity on this old, tired goat and banish me so I can't trouble humanity any longer. Please. Aw. Let's do this. Let's help her. I take pity on you. <laughs> oh, evil, ancient, eldritch being. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I rub my temple. This is tricky. On the one hand, I came here to banish her. This corrupted forest is devouring this town, and who knows how much further it'll spread if nothing's done. On the other hand, I have serious reservations about helping an eldritch god do anything. All of those missing people posters? She's responsible. She and her cult are pure evil. But for now, we want the same thing. Her gone. All right, tell me how to do this. Do I just grab any old knife and... Your mortal weapons can harm me, child, but they cannot stop me. But that book you carry, it holds the key to my banishment. Perform the rituals in order until you arrive at the uprooting ritual. That one will banish me for good. First things first, you will need a partner. I am a goddess of lust. So, many of your rituals will require you to be in the presence of your ideal mate, your heart's desire. Perform the spawn partner ritual on the next page. Well, it's a good thing she's here then. <laughs> okay, let's spawn our ideal heart's desire. Okay. Light the ritual candles. The color of the flame does not matter, so please choose a color you find comforting. That's the one. <laughs> Have your choice of an aromatic herb on your person. Pick a scent you find pleasant. Okay, so we gotta go back downstairs and get that, um, those, those herbs that are in the dining room. BRB, Roxanne. Oh, never mind. Okay. Well, I guess we just... I don't know what I grabbed. <laughs> what is that? Lavender? Oh, but I like mint. Okay. Or rosemary. Rosemary. Yep. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Imagine your ideal partner. If it exists, it will appear before you in a cloud of smoke. If it does not exist, it will be created. Do not imagine something you can't put back. Okay. Now we chant. Taranak ya mgep. Uagafnya. I told you. <laughs> oh 
Wait, I can explain. Go ahead. I've got nothing. <laughs> what is wrong with my taste? <laughs> There's no need to be bashful, especially after all that time you spent playing coy. What are you talking about? This is the first time I've ever seen you. In view of the circumstances, perhaps I will allow you to be my partner. Really? And that's okay with you? Even though we just met? Well, it's sudden, and it'll be a long, long time before I could ever trust a human again. But I'm not exactly the god of taking things slow. Besides, I already have a thousand children. <laughs> There's no harm in a thousand and one. Let's not worry about the logistics. <laughs> Wait, what are we talking about? Taking me as your partner? I thought we were talking about just being my girlfriend. <laughs> you thought... You thought that the two definitions of partners, that a fertility goddess was referring to the platonic meaning? There's three meanings of partners. What's the third? Cowboys. <laughs> Joking around while standing so close to Ooh, me. Oh, she got more eyes. Should be melting with desire. Being anywhere within a mile of me should amplify your lust a thousandfold. Oh, that's an easy one. A thousand times zero is zero. Wait, are you saying what I think you're saying? Yeah. So, I take it you haven't had children yet? No, doesn't seem like I have. Nope. Aren't with child now? No. You're going to die here, and there's nothing I can do to help. What? I thought we were trying to get you out of here. You're just not gonna help me because I don't have kids? It's not that I won't, it's that I can't. I am an entity of untapped cosmic potential. And I want a big family. The biggest family possible. I want every living thing on Earth to be a direct descendant of me or one of my followers. It's a little incesty. Those that best serve that goal receive a fraction of my power. My most devoted followers are bestowed with gifts like extended lifespans, rapid healing, physical enhancement, and in some cases, immortality. And those followers are the ones looking for you. You, on the other hand, have closed yourself off to my dark influence and are mortal and vulnerable. No kids, no powers. What if I don't want powers or kids? What if I drained the life from your body and then used it to fertilize my wicked soil until something that will give me grandchildren comes calling out? You know what? <laughs> Why don't you go ahead and banish yourself from this planet, then? I take an involuntary step backwards. I'm sorry. You didn't deserve that. No, I didn't. Are you alright? I'm a little hurt. I'm fine. Don't worry about me. Powers or not, let's move on to the next ritual so we can get out of here. Okay? Mm. Holy moly, that was freaking scary. She's really taking this hard. I better go get the stuff for the next ritual. All right, Epicurean feast. Meat from a living thing that died within the black woods. Check the meat rack in the dining room. Okay. Well, that's another ritual room. Looks like some people got disintegrated.
know that song. Okay. Tear a hunk of meat from the hook. This should be what I'm looking for. It smells kind of strange. Is this beef? Pork? Whatever it came from, it was huge. I should move on before I count the number of legs hanging on the hooks. Okay. Milk of the black goat. Store-bought 2% is apparently fine, too. It's in the fridge. How did you buy milk from a... Oh. Because it's not like a supernatural black goat. It's just a normal goat. <laughs> this is the milk of a black goat? It just looks like a regular carton of store-bought strawberry milk with a label slapped on it. I guess the cultists would have a hard time getting the real thing from Roxanne now that the relationship is soured. No pun intended. This should be good enough. Lastly, a receptacle filled to the brim with liquid life. Blood! They meant blood! Please use blood from now on. Sorry. Ew. Okay, receptacle for blood is in here. Blood and a settling amount of it. This is what the ritual calls for? A chill just ran up my spine. Am, am I being watched? I have everything I need. I need to get out of here, fast. I'm back. Okay. Chant while facing red fire candles. Okay. A horigor ya pa Well done. Looks like you did everything perfectly. Impressive. Duh. Nothing to it. If all the rituals are this easy, I'll have you out of here in no time. <laughs> Perhaps so. I, um, I don't want to leave things as they are between us. Your life is your own. I'm sorry for losing my composure. Mm. Oh, that? I nearly forgot about that already. I'm a little surprised a literal god would bother apologizing to a human at all. Well, she needed to, because that was rude. <laughs> I've given it some thought, and while you may be blasphemously abstinent, you're the only person in the world that can help me. Hmm. Probably not a, the only one. I'm sure there's a lot of asexual people out there. You see, if you step within range of my woods, any desire you have that will lead you closer to me is amplified to such an intense degree that it's unbearable, and most of the time, it's lust. Anyone who is led here seeking carnal or animalistic pleasures develops the Sacramento stare and becomes a cultist. If you are brought into my woods for any other reason, you don't become one of my chosen thousand, and your desire will make you futilely search the woods for what isn't there. You'll forget to eat and sleep, and you'll search and search until you die of exhaustion and become fertilizer for the woods to grow further. You're the only person to reach me without joining the cult, or dropping dead. Thanks in no small part to the fact that you don't have lust to amplify. My only question is, if you're not here for lust, why are you here? This is my grandma's house. I pulled the receipt out of my pocket. I came looking for my parents. They vanished somewhere around here a year ago. This used to be a letter from them saying they were here in this house. But once I got here, it turned into a blank receipt and won't turn back. The woods have indeed toyed with your emotions to bring you here. That paper was likely never a letter from your parents, but the woods made you believe it was. I'm sorry. I mean, we knew that. So, they're just... still gone. They were likely consumed by my woods no more than three days after they disappeared. I feel like I've been punched in the gut. The dust is long settled on my parents being gone, but the grief never faded. Eat. It'll give you your strength back. The woods won't let you feel how tired you are. I've seen what those started as. I don't... I don't want it. I don't feel tired at all, but come to think of it, I felt like I was going to collapse when I made it to this house. I don't think I've eaten since I got the letter, either. I take a few bites, and the tears abate. There, there. It'll be alright, Stardust. 
Don't you call me that. Don't You don't have the right to call me that. You killed my parents. <laughs> Stardust. How did you know my parents' nickname for me? Anything that dies within my black woods becomes a part of it. A part of me. Their memories of you likely live on in me. I guess that settles it. My parents really are gone. That's the only way she could know that name. This isn't the kind of closure I was hoping I'd find here. But I came here to put an end to the disappearances. And that's what I'll do. Um... I hope this isn't an offensive question, but all the missing people and the people that came looking for them, you killed them all? It was never supposed to be like this. I came bearing gifts of safe childbirth for infant and mother, hungerlessness, disease immunity. But instead, my own worshippers tormented me until it broke my hearts. Now my woods are bloodthirsty, and I'm forced to watch innumerable die. But why? How could somebody do something like that? How could somebody have so much hate in their hearts? Because it's had an eternity to accumulate. What was that? It sounded like something breaking downstairs. Are they coming? Already? No, 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 no! I forgot. Roxanne is just as scared as I am. I need to be more careful with showing fear for her sake. It could just be the house. The place is old and rotten in some places, so sometimes the house shifts on its own. I take a quick look around my room for the sturdiest thing I can find. They left my bass guitar untouched. I'll check it out. It sounded like it came from the kitchen. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> I think it's this way. Yeah. I will kill you. <laughs> Nobody's here. Are you sure about that? I don't see anything out of the ordinary. It could have just been the house settling, like I said. <laughs> I fucking knew it. I was ready. I think that hit knocked them out cold made so much noise. I can't afford to stick around, but I don't feel good about letting this maniac wake up and ambush me again. I'll tie them up somewhere so I can keep my eye on them. Why is that knife covered in blood? I can't for the life of me find a wound anywhere on my body, and I certainly don't feel any pain either. I grab a hold of the scruff of the cultist's collar and drag them a short distance. They feel unusually light to carry, but my left arm can't produce any force. What's going on with... What was that? My vision. No matter how much I focus, I can't bring it back. Just like the fake letter I received. Are the woods concealing my injuries from me? So I can't tell when I'm about to drop dead? I sling my base over my shoulder by its strap and drag the cultist with my right arm alone. I'm sure this would be torture if I could feel pain or exhaustion. Where the fuck did I put her? I got her. I got her. Don't even worry. I'm back. Welcome back. What is that? Bass guitar? Not that. The dead body. Oh. They're alive, actually. You took one of the thousand alive? And then brought them here? This is... 
Very good, actually. Now you have a blood sacrifice if you need one. What did you say? Some of these rituals require blood or human participants. Having someone knocked out and served to you on a silver platter makes things much easier. I didn't drag them up the stairs so they could be a sacrifice. I tie the wrists together behind a load-bearing post in my room. Now, I'm an outer god, so my moral code is completely different from that of humans. But didn't they just try to kill you? Maybe. But under that mask, this could be someone else who went missing. I could never put someone through what I felt when my parents didn't come back. The mask is snug against the cultist's face, but with a firm yank. Her? Nanny! You! Oh, you're that klutz from Missing Person Lane! <laughs> you worthless slam. We'll kill you. You'll never escape from this town alive. Oh, you're gonna die, die, die! Slowly. Painfully. <laughs> Long live Buck! Long live the Thousand! Sheesh. Maybe I bonked you on the head a little too hard. It's not that. She has the stare. Her lust for the leader of the Thousand, Buck, has been amplified a thousandfold into blind fanaticism. <sighs> hey, don't try to wiggle out of that. I don't want to have to hurt you. I just needed to make sure that you wouldn't attack me again. You think you can steal my book, bash me over the head with a guitar, tie me up, and get away with it? Oh, you're so dead. <laughs> what did you expect to thank you? <sighs> She's long gone. It's pointless trying to talk to her. If you're insisting on keeping her alive, just do us both a favor and keep an eye on her. If you have to look away, don't turn your back on her for too long. I do insist on keeping her alive. If she has the stare, then she didn't choose this. She's just another innocent person who got tricked into coming here. Hey, if you just stay put for now, then I can let you go after I'm done here, okay? Drop dead. I sigh and return her mask to her. First things first, I need to do something about my arm. Rejuvenate virility. Make sure she's still there. To heal injuries, place a goat skull over your face and light green fire candles. Okay, well, I need that. Thank you. <laughs> green candles. I see you. Ensure this symbol is drawn nearby and face a mirror. If the intended target isn't the caster and isn't deceased, draw the symbol instead. Okay. Well, I am the caster, so here's a mirror. Have a mirror? Do I have to... Okay. I don't know if I have a mirror. Do I need to go to the bathroom? Nope. Okay. Oh, is this a mirror? I'm gonna say it is. Ahorna nifotog yeo gognor grims vada. That should do it. I inspect my arm, but I still can't tell whether I'm in pain or not. I can only hope I'm not still bleeding out. That about handles my injuries. Hey, um... What? Your name is Nanny, right? I'm gonna give you your mask back so you can do the ritual too. I bet that lump aches, huh? What? The one you gave to me? Yeah, that one. I didn't mean to hurt you, I swear. You came at me, I was just defending myself. Look, you're hurt. Let me help you patch it up and we'll call it even. Deal? Like, barf me out. Here. Now chant. 
Bottom of the page. I know how to do it. Ahorna, the goth tog, like, to do a goth more grins bada. Better? This is gonna come back to bite you. Just wait until I break free, then you're toast for real. That's what I would assume. Ugh, why did I do that? I wish I had a choice to not do that. What a gruesome looking ritual. I didn't even get to read it yet. Nothing, just getting the creepy crawlies from this one. It looks like I've got to eat a bunch of stuff in order to make- The seed, made immortal by my influence. When you die, the seed will bloom, leaving something good in the world long after you've passed away. And when will this dying take place? That's kind of beautiful, actually? Really? You think so? I do. While I don't like to think about dying, it's kind of comforting thinking a part of me will live on, you know? Well, the same could be said about having children. They carry on your legacy long after you die, too. And if you have a bunch of children, it's like living forever. Doesn't that sound nice, too? Hmm? No, not everybody needs to have children. Don't pressure me. Don't pressure me. Sheesh, all this grandkids talk. You're just like my mom. <laughs> I can work with that. I will spray you. I will spray the shit out of you. <laughs> Roxanne! Kidding, kidding. I was only 60% serious. It's still more than half serious. <laughs> but then again, living forever is something best done through offspring. Experiencing it yourself. You mean like what you did to my Bucky? He brought that upon himself. You cursed him. He was your most devout follower, and you cursed him. Wait, cursed? One of my followers, the leader of the Thousand, stole a kiss from me long ago and became immortal. No matter what happens, he will still exist. Forever. How is that a curse? I could use some immortality right about now. Wouldn't it be nice to live forever? No. Um, I mean, immortality is certainly not living forever. The pain you feel after fatal wounds becomes permanent, lifelong agony. Well, yeah, that sounds really fucked up. I, mm, I thought you would just heal or something. I mean, if it's a fatal wound, but it's still a wound. Wouldn't your body still heal? I mean, it'll take a really fucking long time if it's a fatal wound, but, like, it would heal eventually, right? I mean, unless you lost a leg or something. I mean, it would still heal. You would just not have a leg anymore. For instance, if a human drowns, they feel indescribable fear and pain for seconds, maybe minutes at worst, and then are swept away by the mercy of death. An immortal human would continue to drown, thrashing and screaming soundlessly until hope came if it came so for a mortal human to be cursed with cosmic permanence immortality is terror beyond death buck realized this and is tormenting me until i take it back then take it back how come you don't just take it back then wouldn't they let you go if you did if cosmic permanence was something that could be undone it wouldn't be permanent would it <laughs> Bucky finds you, when he gets his hands on you. Buck is already here. Uh-oh. A voice from the other side of my bedroom door. I didn't even hear him coming. Bucky! Buck, they're here. Hello in there. It would appear that you have my book, my nanny, and my god inside that room with you. The good news is, you're holding all of the cards, as long as Nanny is unharmed. She's fine. I just tied her up. Is that so? Then it looks like we can make a deal. If you let us in, we'll take Nanny and go. You will not be coming in this room. No. What? No way! Once that door is open, I'm going missing for sure. <laughs> Do you realize the situation you're in? We can storm in and take the book, the girl, and the god by force. Then how come you haven't done it already? You might get a lucky shot on one of us before you died. Like I assume you did Nanny. 
And if the injury was serious, we'd be stuck for the next who knows how many years with it. All of that is too much risk over you. Right. And so you'll just let me waltz on out of here? We get dozens of people trapped in our woods every week. It means nothing to us if you escape. Even if I go straight to the police and tell them everything? <laughs> the police are already here. Yeah, figured that. Open the door, and you can keep Roxanne and the book. And if you don't, you know what will happen. You have 20 seconds to make your choice. Well, can I at least have it? <sighs> Roxanne! What do I do? Okay, here we go. Stop. You'll hit the book. I quickly leap back from the door awaiting the onslaught of cultists. But instead I hear footsteps retreating. Stardust! Are you alright? I pat myself down quickly. If I got hit, it wasn't enough to make me lose consciousness. That'll have to do. What gives? Why are they running away? Did I do something to scare them off? They know you have to leave this room eventually. So they're waiting to ambush you. Don't let your guard down. They could be anywhere. Awesome. This ritual is required to safely approach the heart of the woods to perform uprooting. The effects are not reversible, even in death. Find and consume the following in order. The pod of a plant which grew underwater within the black woods. Raw meat of an animal that died within the black woods. The petal of a flower that grew from the soil of the black woods. Ensure there are no lit candles in the room with you. Face any plant in a room with your spawned partner present. God, I'm gonna have to go to like three different rooms. I have to go to the bathroom, and then the kitchen, and then the brother's room. Son of a bitch. Can I take it anyways? I don't have it. Why would I not bring it? Found one. I think this thing's a plant, so it probably counts. My bath's ceramic, I think. Nothing a plant could grow on. So I can only imagine that the plants are actually growing out of under the murky water. The leathery seedling tears off a little resistance. I try to chew it, but it's hard as a rock. Something is off about the taste, too. I managed to force it down. Whatever it was, I don't think it was poisonous, but I feel kind of sick now. I better get a move on. I have no weapon. The fuck am I going to do if I find them? Not that way. Oh, this way. Okay. All right. 
Looks like I'm supposed to eat it raw this time. A tear of a dripping morsel of the strange meat. Pinch my nose shut and imagine it's beef tartare as I force it down. It leaves a metally aftertaste in my mouth and it feels like something didn't go down quite right. I feel very sick all of a sudden. My stomach immediately starts to churn. I need to get out of here. Huh? What's that incredible smell? A rich, warm scent clouds my senses, settling my stomach almost instantly. I follow my nose, and it leads back to the meat. Could it really be? Did I just get a bad first piece or something? I hesitantly take another bite, and a wave of satisfaction washes over me, and my appetite kicks into overdrive. I've never tasted anything like that. I eat a third piece, and then a fourth, and then a fifth. It's like I've gone my whole life without eating until now. The seconds between bites feel like an eternity of withdrawal. Eventually my hunger abates, but only after I stripped it clean to the marrow. I need to get one last ingredient, the petal of a flower that grew in the black woods. I walk away gnawing idly on the bone. Okay. <laughs> Yep, that's the, that guy's still in there. We'll go this way. <laughs> yep, okay. Hello? Is anyone here? There's a guy in there. What do we do? We gotta get in there. What do I do? And can I get this? Well, I can't do anything if the guy's in there. as radiant as this one. It must be a flower grown directly from the Blackwood soil. This is the last thing I need to eat before I can complete the ritual. I pluck a petal quietly and toss it in my mouth. It tastes sweet like honey. It leaves a numbing, unfamiliar sensation on my tongue, as if I'm tasting the very nature of the Blackwoods. Suddenly, a sharp, bitter taste seizes me, and the sweetness vanishes. I try to spit out the petal, but I can't move. All I can do is look back at the flower, and see how it and the surrounding plants all seem to be growing, all in the same direction, towards me. The horror. My heart begins beating again, and my consciousness returns suddenly. I'm curled up on the ground in the corner of the room. My face is wet with tears, and I feel like several hours have gone. The flower is gone. Nothing remains of it but my vague memory and an inexplicable sense of dread. So I'm just sobbing, crying hysterically in this room, curled up in a corner, and none of them noticed? Is there some enticing ass boobies. No lit candles. Face any plant in a room with your spawned partner present. Does this one? <laughs> okay. Now we're going to chant. Theranok Luwanof Hup Ya Naga Well done. We're so close I can taste it. This 
feeling of hope welling in my chest. So unfamiliar. I'd hate to disappoint you, but we're trapped in a pretty terrible situation. I'm not sure if escape is realistic at this point. I have no idea how many of them are, there are, and I know they're armed. I can't safely get out of this room anymore. The chances are that I'm going to walk into one of their traps eventually, even if I'm on guard every minute of every ritual left. We may yet make it out of this. I know what ritual is next. As long as Nanny stays down, this will be easy. Bonk her over the head again. You know how I mentioned that we'll be in need of a sacrifice? The time has come. Sacrifice? Who? Nanny? Isn't she... She is still alive. Normally, one or two fatal injuries wouldn't be enough to kill her since she's one of the thousand. But, oddly enough, she's slipping away. I didn't hit her that hard, did I? We'll have to work quickly. Cold blood can't be used as a sacrifice. I mean, I did hit her over the head with a bass guitar. It's... It's pretty unbelievable that she didn't just die instantly. She'll be sacrificed? After all that's happened to her? I can't just leave her like this. Right? Summon firstborns. Oh, as soon as she's sacrificed, though, it's game over. Oh, God. This ritual will call upon any and all firstborns within the Black Woods to gather a prodigious amount of fresh blood, vital for many rituals, including uprooting. If you are death shy, follow these steps to avoid being targeted. Death shy. Chant near your spawned partner. After chanting, immediately leave the room. Okay. this page <laughs> okay so it just says uh, chant and leave lanagya yo gognor the wolf nahana get out survive Nowhere within the Black Woods is safe except for the heart of the woods. The hearts will hide your scent from them. To avoid firstborns on your way, avoid making eye contact. They will know if you saw them. Move quickly, but do not run. You will attract their attention. Be observant. Do not look at the next page until you have reached the hearts. Oh god, that... How do I get there? Fucking shit. Okay. Go this way. Okay. Go this way. room. There's the ladder. Okay. 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 All right. And then Okay, I think I found it. <clears throat> Alright, wait for the candles to go out. Do not leave the heart of the woods until the candles go out on their own, no matter what you see or hear. Once the candles go out, leave immediately. Return to the room where the ritual began. Find what they left for you and chant three times to end the ritual. Okay, gotta wait for the candles to go out all on their own.
Get out. Get out again. Exit the crawl space. Alright, now I gotta go back to the ritual room. Maybe all the cultists got eaten by babies. Okay, what did you leave for me? Uh, got it, but what exactly is it? I open the sack. The contents are a dark red liquid, thickly mixed with another darker fluid. It smells kind of like fresh wine. I close the sack up, ignoring the sight of two bright red fingers floating to the top. No time to recover from all this excitement. I've got to end this ritual. Yep, three times. Higyoka Igognor Luwufnahana Epgoka Iogognor Luwufnahana Epgoka Iogognor Luwufnahana How wonderful. With all of this fresh blood, we're as good as home free. Soon I will finally leave Sacramento behind. Hopefully, wherever you spend the remainder of your reality will be greener pastures as well. That would be nice. <laughs> yeah. Wait, what do you mean remainder of my reality? I know it's a lot to take in, but because I'm an outer god, everything in this reality is my dream, including you. Sometime after I'm uprooted, I will wake up, and this reality will end. Nah, I'm no better or worse than any other human. Yes. And I'm part of this dream, meaning I'll probably vanish too. Most likely. So that makes me your dream girl, technically. Well, that's one takeaway from the existential atom bomb I just dropped on you. But yes, I suppose so. <laughs> oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh! <laughs> Cool. <laughs> cool indeed. But it's about to get very, very hot. Uprooting me will cause the entire Black Woods to burn down. So you'll need to run. If the woods were able to lure you in all the way from wherever you were living, it means its roots have grown that far. That will burn too. Just how far am I supposed to be running? I would say 60 miles just to be safe. Piece of cake. Doing this is going to burn everything down within 60 miles? It's a small price to pay to excise the woods from your planet. Left unchecked, they will envelop the whole Earth, turning every human into either a cultist or fertilizer. Just think of it like a widespread forest fire. And not even the worst one you've seen. Humanity has dealt with far larger wildfires before. Your towns will heal. So I just gotta run for it once the fire starts. Don't stop running. And leave the book behind to burn. If the Thousand ever recovered it, they could seed the Blackwoods again. And this will all have been for nothing. But what if they save the book before it burns to ash? I think I'll stay to watch it burn. If the Blackwoods come back, people will die. I probably wouldn't be able to pull this off twice. Whatever time this world has left, I'll happily risk my life for it. But everything you went through, it wouldn't have been for us. It'd have been for me. We're, we're girlfriend and girlfriend. Of course, of course I'm going to do that for you. I can't let you do that after the things I've said, the things I've done to you personally. You didn't do anything wrong. You didn't deserve any of this. If it helps, I'm not rolling over and dying. I'm going to run my hardest as soon as I'm sure the book, book is destroyed and you're safe. I don't know what to say. Thank you. Don't thank me yet. I've got to finish this last ritual. Okay, back to the bathroom and the fridge again. 
I wish she would just tell us ahead of time all the things we would need for these rituals so I could have gone out and gotten everything the first time. If your relationship with Roxanne Selva Oscura has soured, or you no longer wish to have the earth consumed by the Black Woods, this ritual is the only way to rid your reality of them. For now. This ritual will cause the Black Woods to burn to ash, and the hearts will return to their dormant state. This will allow you to escape from the Black Woods. But be warned, you can never meaningfully leave the Black Woods once you've entered them. What does that mean? Have all of the following on your person. The blood of at least ten human-sized living things. The seed of rot bloom within you. A common flame accelerant like flour, cinnamon, cooking oil, nail polish remover, or hairspray. Go to the heart of the woods while facing a heart chant. How the fuck am I going to get that much blood? What do I need from in here? Do I need anything from in here? Why did it tell me to come here? See? Because there's cinnamon downstairs. But what do I need in here? Ah, hairspray. Okay. All right. Back to the fucking kitchen. Again. Oh, son of a... <laughs> no, I was so close. How did they get me? I was so careful. I need from in here. I know there's cinnamon in the kitchen. But why is it why is the star in here? have the blood bowl anymore well there is literally nothing in here for me to interact with so I'm just gonna go down to the hearts I guess and do the ritual and hope that it doesn't fuck up forever and then I'll die okay so, I have, I hope that I have at least all of that blood. I don't, the star is gone. I obviously collected something. Okay. Fmlatka Nagafatog Luish Gorog. So the Black Woods have been destroyed. May something green and good grow from its ashes. Yay! I am so, so proud of you. <laughs> I can't thank you enough. It's ironic, isn't it? The day I get my wish of never having to see a human again is the same day I finally meet one worth knowing. Oh. <laughs> there she goes. It's like an oven in here already. I hear frantic commotion. They must be coming. Huh? The book is blackening in my hand. I must be engulfed in fire. The Blackwoods, even at the bitter end, 
must be preventing me from feeling the flames. As long as I'm sure the book burns to the very last page, this is fine. Looks like that's it. If I'm still in one piece, I can run for the door. <gasps> okay. Oh! Hey, Buck. Did something scary happen? What? Sit tight. Another episode of Sucker for Love at Date to Die For is coming up. Ugh. I can't believe I wasn't able to get the stupid book back. <laughs> Guess I've got to get involved now. The book is mine. Next time on Sucker for Love. House of Wax. I can't wait. <laughs> House of Wax. <laughs> okay, so it seems like if we had opened the door, we probably would have been killed. But then, after we survive, we weren't given the choice. We just kind of went through the entire ritual. So I guess next time we'll... I guess we'll we'll go through and we'll we'll die and then go through and survive and see if something different happens. Okay, let's open the door. I trust you. It's fine. Okay, so when we tried to heal Nanny, we had this symbol drawn on the chalkboard and not this one, so it seemed as if we had healed her, but maybe we hadn't, because when you look at the checkpoint, it says that we healed self. But not Nanny. So maybe we heal her instead of ourselves first. So we'll do this curly Q mustache one. Okay. And then we gotta make sure we have green candles. Okay, we're looking at them. And we're gonna chant. The intended target isn't a caster and isn't a cease. Draw the symbol instead. She has the mask on. Do I have to heal myself first? Okay, well. I guess I'm not allowed to heal Nanny. Okay, yeah, I think I just never changed this symbol. So, it didn't heal her right. Okay. And then I guess since I didn't change it, it just moved on to the next. Yes, there, it, right here, what do you mean no valid target? She's right here. I'm so confused. It doesn't give me the option. Like it doesn't it doesn't allow me to change the symbol before I go and talk to her. So I'm confused. Okay, I just had to wait until after Buck left. So Buck shot the wall and then then I was able to heal her. She's still alive? The Thousand's tenacity is just something else. What have you done? Why did you heal her? He knew I was in here with you. And fired anyway. You heard it too, right? He said to stop shooting because they'd hit the book. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Is it just me or is she acting different? Thanks for... Bringing me back, or whatever. Huh? 
Huh? Thanks? Does she just say thank you? Roxanne, what's happening? Her desire for Buck was what drew her into the woods. Now that her desire for Buck is zero, there's nothing to amplify. That's all. Really? She's not one of them anymore? Hey, if I untie you, you won't attack me, right? No, Stardust. Think. Crisis of faith or not, she is still with the Thousand and just tried to kill you. She literally has your blood on her hands. This is true. I slipped the guitar strap off from around her wrists. There. How's that? I'm not gonna say thank you for releasing me, too. You're the one who tied me up in the first place. Put her back. Put her back. <laughs> I'm leaving. Bye. Stardust, we're going to regret this. Have a little faith in me. It'll be alright. Well... I do feel a little better that she is not here with us anymore. Nanny not being around is fine by me. Okay, now let's go perform Rot Bloom, see if there's anything different. Nope, 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 not that room. Not that room. <laughs> How wonderful. So we've got our guitar again. Why are we why do we have our guitar now? I feel like we shouldn't hit whatever is here. Because we didn't have our guitar before when we did the uproot heartburn thing. Why would we have it now? That doesn't make any sense. What do we do? Hey, I'm back. See? See? You can't trick me. Hey, Nanny. Nanny came back? Hurry, get in here. Jeez, I almost took her head off. She's back? Why? Because I'm leaving too. And the only way I'm getting out of here is if you finish your rituals. I gotta get back to my folks. And you do too, so... Actually, thanks to the Thousand, that's no longer a possibility for her. Oh. Were they... No. Did... We kill them, lure them into the woods, and let them wander around until they starve to death? Yes. <laughs> I take a deep breath and force a small smile. I swallowed hard, forcing the familiar lump in my throat back down. And you saved me anyways. I don't know how I could even begin to thank you. Well, you can start by helping us escape. Having an ex-cultist on our side evens the odds greatly. It does? Since she has children, she has the same superhuman strength and tenacity as the rest of them. Huh? What are you talking about? I do not have kids. What do you mean? You've been Buck's girlfriend all this time. Inside my aura of desire, no less. How haven't the two of you had kids yet? Why don't you tell me? You're the space goat with magic powers or whatever. How come instead of bringing me and Buck closer, you ruined everything? Ruined everything? You two seemed pretty close before he, um, shot you? I mean, I guess we'd be close if I ever got to see him or have any time alone together. I mean, that was what I thought all of this was gonna be. He told me that the black goat of the woods was like some goddess of love or lust or whatever. So I was all like, OMG, that's totally hot. Let's summon her right now. But like, as soon as we did, he stopped talking to me. And that's totally her fault. Between you and all the other girls that wander into town, it's like I'm invisible or whatever. Guess that explains why Nanny thought I was here for Buck when we first ran into each other. For a second back there, I thought he'd realized how much I meant to him. Back when he said you can keep the book and the god if he just got me back. 
but I guess I'm like. Hey, don't get yourself down. There's plenty of other violent cult leaders out there. I'm sure you'll find the right one for you. I'm swearing off of skulls and robes for a while. After we do these rituals, that is. Here's everything you need for the next one. Saved you the trip. Aw, thanks, Nanny. Really? To think she risked returning just to help me. Here. If you take my old robes and mask, you can, like, slip right past them. I'll stay behind and make sure the book burns. Aw! And I get to live. But what about you? Won't they kill you if they see you without your cult stuff? As if. They know my face. If they see me running away, they'll let me go. Here. Try this on. I slip on the robes and tuck my head into the goat skull mask. It fits snugly. It fits. Do you know what that means? That the disguise will work? Well, yeah, but more importantly... It means we're the same size. Can I totally raid your closet on my way out? Because, like, I didn't want to say this while we were trying to kill each other or anything, but I love your pastel goth book. It's so cute. <laughs> Thanks, Nanny. Yeah, yeah, probably best to grab it now before it burns to the ground. <laughs> oh, yeah, take whatever you want. It's all burning to the ground anyways. Stardust, no! We're so close to escaping. You can't throw it all away now by trusting her. If the book doesn't burn, all of this will be for nothing. If you trust her, and then she hands the book over to the Thousand, both of us are going to pay for it. She already switched sides once today. I got us this far, didn't I? We won't let you down now. I want this so badly, and I don't know if I have any hearts left to break. Come on, let's head on down to the root room and finish this. It's the heart room, actually. <laughs> Not the root room. All right, girl. It's as if and whatever our way out of here. Okay. Let's chant. I did it. And so the black words have been destroyed. May something green and good grow from its ashes. Absolutely. I am so, so proud of you. I can't thank you enough. Don't wake up and end my existence. That would be great. It's ironic, isn't it? The day I get my wish of never having to see a human again is the same day I finally meet one worth knowing. Okay. Toss me the book. I look down at the purple ritual book, hearing Roxanne's worries echo one more time through my head. I know what I'm doing. Here. Haha, <laughs> I didn't imagine the night ending with me willingly handing the book over to you. Oh my god, right? Like, totally not what I expected at all. You know, Buck really wants this book. And now that the woods are all burning down, he'd probably give anything to have it back. If we went back to the thousand together, we could ask for anything. <laughs> no. Bad nanny. Nanny. Kidding, kidding. <laughs> I was just kidding. Jeez. Well, mostly. Mm-hmm. She takes a long look at the book before tossing it into the fire. Hey, this is like so embarrassing to say, but I think we would have been besties if things were different or whatever. You're so cute. Stop. Stop it. <laughs> we definitely would have been besties. See ya. Okay, bye, Nanny. Her smile is really pretty. I wish we could have met somewhere else, too. Time to go. Hopefully this disguise is enough to escape. Shoot. I wasn't expecting to have to talk my way out. Yeah, um, totally. It is her. 
What are you still doing in here? This place is coming down! Do I really have all of them fooled? Damn it! That outsider must have completed the uproot ritual. If we rush her, we might be able to save the book. Right! There's no way the book is burned all the way yet. I need to buy Nanny more time. Wait! I'll, like, totally get the book myself or whatever. Really? Mommy, you're amazing! You're a true believer! I can't believe you've sacrificed yourself for all of us! Come on, guys! Let's get out of here! Right! Morons. Get the fuck out of here. This way. Okay. There's the door. Goodbye! I made it? I survived the night? I've got a long way to go before I'm clear of the wildfire, but I'm ahead of it for the moment. I'd better be sure to ditch the robe and mask. I don't want to be mistaken for a cultist once I'm home free. I lower my mask solemnly as I watch my childhood home burn to the ground. The house crackles loudly as the wood foundation splinters. Large sections of the house begin coming down in cinders, burying any cultists unfortunate enough to have been trapped underneath. This should be the end of the disappearances. Wait, what's that? Sit tight! Another episode of Sucker for Love at Date to Die For is coming up. Sorry, I ended up not giving the book back after all. Good. Yes, I've got to get involved now. The book is mine. Next time on Sucker for Love. House of Wax. I can't wait. Nanny has left the thousand. Chapter one, true end. Yay! I hope that she left the thousand and also got to leave that house. And she didn't burn to death. Okay. Nanny lived, at the very least, until then, so hopefully she lived the whole way. <laughs> I fucking love this game. <laughs> I loved the first one so much, and I love this one. I'm so excited to keep playing the next chapter. If you ever see any evil goat mommies in your room, just remember, sometimes they're not all bad. And I'll see you later.